I inadvertently ruined my favorite sweater. See these light spots? I got soy sauce on it or something, and then whatever stain remover I used made these spots. I tried soaking it in OxyClean to get them out, to get it all the same color, but it didn't work. First step is to weigh the sweater to see how much alum I need for the mordant. So that's 550 grams, we'll round up, 550 grams of sweater. Aluminum potassium sulfate. I need 15% of this stuff to go with the cotton. So for 550 grams of cotton, 81 grams. The washing soda box says um, add two tablespoons of washing soda per gallon of water. Um, so that's about two gallons in this bucket. But my washing soda is all in chunks because of being stored in my shed. So I'm just going to put one of these chunks in there and stir it until it dissolves. Two tablespoons per gallon? Does that look like four tablespoons? Sure it does. I might have to use my hands to dissolve this. Okay, I got that um, lump of washing soda dissolved. There were some parts that wouldn't dissolve um, and I, uh, I pulled them out and threw them in the woods. So, why do I feel water on my hand? Because it came in from the top. So let's put the sweater in and uh, let it get wet. The next step, it has to be wet, so I thought I might as well do another step while I'm waiting for this pot of water to boil. You need hot water to open the fibers of the cotton, but I'm using cold water now because my pot's not boiling yet. And I'm going to use all that hot water for the next step. Look at that spot. Gross. This part of the collar looks pretty gross too. I'm going to get in here with both hands and just scrub and scrub. I'm calling this the scouring step. I figured out why I keep feeling a cold breeze on my inside of my hand. There's a, a slit in these brand new gloves I just got. I guess I'll be taking these back. That gross brown stuff around the collar is gone already. So this was a useful step, I think, for sure. I squeezed the washing soda out and put the sweater in a bucket of clean water. And I'm just going to keep going back and forth, squeezing and rinsing in the clean water uh, until my water's boiling. I have to keep filling up buckets and then pouring it into an empty bucket to get these precipitates out. Water's still not boiling, but it's thinking about it. My box had a blowout. Here's the instructions, the label. Important to remind myself not to get it on the outside of my lab. All right, my water's boiling. All right, here's my good clean bucket. This one is nice and smooth. I haven't mixed concrete in this one. So this is the one I'm going to use for my um, mordant process. I'm making sure there's not any trash that's fallen in out of this tree that's over my head. And now I'm a little worried about putting this boiling water in this plastic bucket. So uh, I don't know what to do but just do it though. I poured a little bit of the water in and now I'm going to add the alum. And I'm going to stir it up with my broken wooden spoon. Make sure this gets all dissolved. And I'll add some more water. All the alum is dissolved, so I'm going to add the rest of the uh, pot of boiling water to the bucket. And now I'm going to add my wet sweater that's been scoured with washing soda and well rinsed. I'm going to add that to the hot alum mixture. We have plenty of water in here. The um, the important thing is to measure the alum based on the weight of the sweater. The amount of water isn't really uh, important except that you need enough to cover the sweater. I remember that my glove has a hole in it so I'm not going to stick my hand in this boiling water. I'm going to sink the sweater in. Um, I think I'm going to use the other end of the spoon and stir this around good um, with two hands. 
Most instructions for mordanting cotton say to simmer it for 45 minutes. This is the pot I use to make jelly to process my jars, and it has some little nicks in the enamel because it's cheap. Um, so I don't want to use it as a dye pot. I can, I'm only going to use it to boil water. Instead of simmering my cotton, I'm going to put this plastic bucket inside this trash can. And I'm going to put the lid on it. And I'm going to leave it here in the sun and uh, go to the store to buy distilled water and get a new glove. And when I come home, I'm going to call this simmered. I'm back with my distilled water. I got my dye out and my new gloves with no holes in them. And now I'm going to start boiling uh, water to make my dye. I'm going to wipe this pot out with a towel because um, when I boil water in it, 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 the calcium carbonate sort of forms a dust on the sides. All right, I've made myself a sort of an inclined table with a trough at the bottom. It's made out of a um, plastic table on some concrete blocks. The trough underneath is made of um, PVC gutter I had left over from another project. All right, it's time to get my sweater out of the alum. Bring it up out of the trash can, and I'm going to move it to an empty bucket, squeezing and rinsing in the clean water. Okay, here's my sweater all laid out on my little um, table thing. I don't think I'll be able to film actually dyeing this. For each 50 gram packet of dye, I'm going to need 70 grams of salt. I'm using kosher salt because that's all I have. So I'm going to weigh my salt um, in three sets because I'm going to do three packets. I have these two big bowls and I have this pot of boiled distilled water and I'm going to add it to the salt and then I'm going to add my packet of red and my packet of orange. It's not going to be the full gallon. All right, I have red and orange mixed up, and I've put the rest of the second gallon of water in the pot to boil um, to do the yellow. So I'm going to start, um, I'm going to take this red dye, and I'm going to dribble it along the bottom of the sweater and collect it in that trough, and then keep putting it back on until I get tired of doing that. Okay, this is fun. So I'm just scooping the um, dye up out of this little trough it back on the sweater and I've, I've just sort of soaked the bottom and now I can start another color. Okay now I like that red band at the bottom so much I'm gonna um, start another color. I'm gonna start with the orange. I'm just gonna pour straight orange on. No I'm not either because if, if I pour straight orange on it's going to um, change the color of the fibers it touches immediately. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour it into the little trough and mix it with the red and I'm going to start pouring that on, and then um, on the next band, maybe I'll go to straight orange. Cool, I can already see the color difference from the red to the orange, uh, but my trough is getting sort of full, so I'm going to empty this into a bucket and, um, and do some more orange with less red. All right, here's my red and orange ombre up to about the um, chest measurement line. Um, and my water is boiling, so I'm going to mix up my yellow. I'm going to do it in a dish pan, um, and I'm going to try to use more water for the yellow uh, because it's a light color. Here's the yellow dye. Stirring it up. I poured all of the boiling water in the yellow. This is going to be the, the largest quantity. And when all this yellow is dissolved, I'm going to add a little bit to the rest of my orange so that it'll get hot again. And I'm gonna keep applying it to the sweater up until I get to about where the collar would fold over and then I'm gonna stop. All right, now I've gotten to the um, collar area. Now I thought about just putting the whole thing into the yellow dye now, um, but I'm afraid that it would, uh, that it would get this color would get up there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour yellow and saturate the top first. So I'm going to do that now. Saturate the top with the hot yellow dye. Wow, how pretty is this? I'm having an overflow event down here though. Okay, this looks beautiful, but I'm really not sure what I'm going to do with it now. <laughs> um, I guess I'll just leave it here. Uh, the dye package says to keep it in the dye for 45 minutes. So I'm going to consider just leaving it here part of the process. 
I need, wish I could cover it up from the sun. Everything says to dry it out of direct sun. All right, I've got some dye that dripped down this plastic, but I'm going to uh, sort of shake that off and uh, put some plastic bags on top of the sweater and then fold this other piece of plastic up on top to keep the heat and moisture in for a little while while I clean everything else up. Okay, I wiped that fa uh, plastic down with uh, cold water and folded it up over the sweater and I'm just going to let that sort of marinate. Okay, I gave up last night. I got too tired. My back was spasming from lifting all that water and the mosquitoes came out and I was just sure I was going to get Zika virus so I left this overnight. That's the next morning. Let's see what happened. Graduation from the bottom to the top is really nice. I hope this lasts. I'm going to see if I can just gently hose this down and get all this dye off. There's a lot of color coming out of this, so I did not exhaust the dye on this job. Oh man, I think I can still see that spot. And I think I missed a spot up here by the shoulders. But I'm liking how gravity's working, so I clamped the sweater to the tabletop so that I can just keep hosing this down on top of this uh, swim pool liner. The back looks pretty good. I flipped the sweater over so I can hose it down from the other side for a little while. I like it. Maybe this will be a sweater that is best viewed from behind. Uh, and I'm still getting a little color running out, so I'm going to keep rinsing. Alright, I've turned it upside down now so I can be sure I get all the yellow out. It seemed to have mostly yellow uh, in the rinse water now. And I definitely missed a spot here on the shoulder. Um, that's too bad. And I can definitely still see the ugly spot from the stain that I was trying to cover up to start with. So, this technique does not work to fix an already ruined sweater. Alright, for the next part I need hot water. So I'm going to come in the lab and fill up my dish pan with hot water. I do actually have a sink. I'm going to use um, my regular uh, laundry detergent. This is the, uh, the HE kind that's not um, as foamy. I think that'll probably help. Back outside. Right, the water is pretty orange from this uh, soapy hot wash. While I'm washing this, I wanted to check that the armpit area of the sweater looks fine. And it's nice and even. Um, one thing I figured out from uh, doing laundry is that uh, deodorant, antiperspirant in particular, is an aluminum salt and it that is a mordant that's the stuff that we soak this in to begin with so if you wash clothes at, that bleed dye they will pick up the dye in the armpits I have washed shirts where a red t-shirt gets black in the armpits and that's because of uh, any perspirant makes the bleeding dye in the wash water stick to that part of the shirt so if you have if you want to dye a used shirt um, it needs to be one that you did not wear directly against your skin unless you uh, figure out how to get it evenly dosed with aluminum salt like the alum that I used. I don't think I always wear a t-shirt under this sweater though so it didn't have a flaw like that. I took the sweater out and put it back on the table so I can hose it off to rinse it. This squeezing is... I'm tired of that. Um, but this shirt I'm wearing uh, I picked well for something that won't show splashes. I hose this off right side up, upside down, front side, back side. Uh, and I think I'm going to try hot water again uh, just to be sure I've got all the dye out. More hot water. The clunking sound is my instant water heater. You can see the reflection of my orange shirt. Please don't turn orange, please don't turn orange, please don't turn orange. Yay. A little bit yellow, not bad. This is a good idea. Since it's heat that sets this kind of dye, and this water is pretty hot, I'm going to just leave this in here um, while I go eat breakfast, because I'm hungry. 
walking back to my house, a wood duck flew out of this tree. I might see baby wood ducks jump out of this tree. I really hope I do. They have a long way down. Well, on standing, this got pretty orange. Um, guess I'll rinse it again. This is finally starting to look pretty clear. This might be my last one. Still just slightly orange with a little bit of bubbles. Okay, I'm not going to do any more after this batch, though. I'm tired. My hands feel like somebody's going to hit them with hammers. I usually dry my sweaters out here on a um, mesh beach chair in front of my air conditioner. So when the fan's on it, it helps airflow. Um, for a cotton sweater, it will never dry if I don't get most of the water out. So I'm going to spread it out on this towel and then fold it over and stomp on it. I made two towels very heavy with water trying to dry the sweater. And it still weighs 1,314 grams. All right, I've sort of blocked this back to a sweater shape. Um, the sleeves are pretty stretched out, but that works for me because I have long arms. So I'm just going to let this dry. Uh, it'll probably take a couple of days. I'll turn it and move it around so it can dry. Here's the finished sweater. It's got some little lines on the arms. It says a little bit of that in the collar area as well. If you're young and your hands don't hurt and you don't have any back pain, um, maybe try an ombre sweater, but um, it stretches them out a lot. <laughs> My arms are not as long as they were before. Basically, I converted a sweater that goes with everything into a sweater that doesn't go with anything. I'm making this video right now as a warning to myself to not try this again. All that ringing and lifting buckets of water. For the $9 I spent on three packs of dye, I could have bought yarn. If you were thinking about trying to ombre dye something, Make sure it's very light so that it will be easier to rinse out. And um, don't do it if you have any kind of hand pain or back pain. And you can still see the spot on the front. So re-dyeing a sweater that you've stained uh, probably won't work. Parts of it were fun. The actual dyeing was, was a lot of fun. Uh, making the video is fun. So thank you for watching. This is Barbara at Beach Knitworks.